Good morning, Your Highness, ladies and gentlemen. It's an absolute pleasure to join you all in Dubai this week, and I'm honored as the UK's Minister for Aviation Security to be the opening speaker at this very important conference, to address such a distinguished audience, and to stand alongside so many countries to reinforce our commitment to aviation security, so that together we can strengthen our international bonds that are so, so vital to the safety and the welfare of our citizens. We know that, despite our very best efforts, the menace we face is likely to persist in the years ahead, as demand for flights increases and as air travel makes a growing contribution to economic prosperity, but also to social well-being. Aviation will remain a prime target for terror groups. The threat is not only very real, it is also constantly evolving. The enemy is resourceful and determined and has the potential to strike almost anywhere. But just as the danger is on a global scale, so our response must be too. With governments and with industry working together, we are better able to adapt, to innovate, to combine our knowledge and our expertise, to address the vulnerabilities in each and every one of our systems, to ensure the safety of our passengers at every airport and in every country. In the UK last year, we saw um, evidence of that evolving threat when a drone, or drones potentially, shut down London Gatwick Airport, our second busiest airport. That caused mass diversions and cancellations on an unprecedented scale. Altogether, 140,000 passengers were affected, and it was one of our busiest times of the year. And it was the first time that a drone had forced such disruption at one of our major airports. In our recent experience, only the ash cloud from the volcano in Iceland had caused anything like the same amount of disruption. And it was an absolute wake-up call to government and to industry alike. We had to learn some very tough lessons very quickly, not just in terms of how did we react immediately, which was keep people safe, but also then how our police, our armed forces, our airports and our airlines all worked together to bring the disruption to an end. And then shortly afterwards, we were tested again, and this time at our largest airport, at Heathrow. Um, but that time, the speed at which we were able to, uh, to respond uh, was much greater, and the success of our response um, showed the progress that we had made following the Gatwick uh, incident. But it was another reminder that we must not be complacent. So two years ago, we launched our, um, the UK's aviation security strategy, and it stresses the importance of continuous improvement and how we can only succeed if we get three things right, and that is the people, the processes, and the technology. These are the fundamental priorities that not only apply to us in the UK, but indeed apply to every single country in the world. We've learned experiences from the drones at London airports, and we share that knowledge with our global partners because it's really important that we share what we learned so that together we can all build more robust, more re resilient, and more agile systems um, of deterrence. So I think we're, we're, we're fairly proud of our reputation as leaders in the aviation security sector, but no single country has all of the answers. It is only our collective effort and our common capabilities that are key to tightening security standards around the world. So since the unanimous adoption of the UN Security Council's first ever resolution on aviation security in 2016, we have demonstrated our collective resolve to protect citizens from an escalating threat. That momentum continued a year later with the endorsement of the Global Aviation Security Plan by the International Civil Aviation Organization Council. This prompted a global discussion on how to raise the bar on aviation security. And later this week at the ICAO Assembly, it will call upon nations to support further measures. The UK is absolutely committed to working through international bodies and with international partners to build a strong protective culture across the industry. One area of particular concern is tackling the risk posed by aviation insiders, what is known as the insider threat. 
Whilst the vast, vast majority of airport staff are decent and honest, it only takes one rogue employee to undermine the entire system. And it doesn't take years or months or even weeks for an employee to go rogue. It can happen in days. And one way we can root out this threat is the use of airport audits. Although ICAO carries out these crucial checks, it does not as yet have the powers to make airports act on its findings. We believe that should change. Staff screening is another key tactic in dealing with the insider threat. For many years in the UK, airport and airline staff have had the same checks as passengers, that this is not the case everywhere. And I understand, I do understand that the cost of installing extra lanes for airport staff is relatively high, but they dwarf insignificance the cost of a successful attack perpetrated by someone employed within the aviation industry. So it's vital to all of us that all airports implement the most effective staff security protocol to provide a clear deterrent. An important part of our approach is to work alongside international partners as part of the UK's Global Aviation Security Assessment Programme. Having now conclu concluded over 400 assessments across 27 um, countries globally, it's clear that the three themes that I talked about earlier, people, processes, and technology, are in intrinsic to all effective security initiatives. The UK has a capacity development program in place to support mitigation efforts with dozens of fellow member states. We've supported the training of over 4,000 screeners through a range of courses and provided 220 explosive de trace detection units for use at airports outside the UK to counter the threat of explosives. explosives. We are also we've also launched our first aviation general security awareness training film, and that's being used across 30 countries worldwide. We are very proud to be involved in this vital work, uh, to be a very responsible part of the aviation community um, to pass on what we know, but as importantly, to learn from others as to what they have experienced with it within their um, uh, security systems. But before I finish, I also want to say how excited we are in the UK to be taking part in Expo 2020 um, here in Dubai. The UK has always been and will always be a great trading nation, and as we leave the European Union, we're looking forward to striking new trade deals with partners across the world. The Expo will demonstrate how we intend to grow, particularly here uh, in the Gulf with our friends. The UK Pavilion will show how British companies are at the forefront of innovation, particularly in artificial intelligence, but also the space industry, and how we want to share our success with our partners through the theme of innovating for a shared future. And it's that same shared future that has drawn us to Dubai this week and the opportunities we have to discuss that future with colleagues from around the world. Yesterday, I had the pleasure of meeting the Nigerian Aviation Minister, and I look forward to meeting many more of you in the coming days to discuss what more we can do together to step up airport security in every nation. The fact that we have terror in our modern world is nothing new. Many countries and regions have had their own unique threats to deal with for decades. But what's distinct about groups such as ISIL and Al-Qaeda is the global nature of their organizations, their ability to operate without detection, their potential to strike almost anywhere and at any time, and their ability to inspire others to do their work. Though their respective fortunes have waned in recent years, both continue to present a formidable threat to aviation. In response to this threat, the international community has massively raised its game. Improving the people, the processes, and the technology, making successful attacks considerably more difficult. We owe a huge debt of gratitude to the thousands of committed people across the world who make our aviation industry safe. Security forces, police, airport workers, airlines, the list is long, but that effort must not slacken. We must remain more determined than ever to engage in an open and a constructive dialogue with our international friends, to keep accelerating our response and to help foil new attacks wherever they are attempted. So I look forward to working with you. We must redouble our efforts to protect and support the great aviation industry. 
so it can continue to build a stronger, more prosperous and a safer world. Thank you.